and uh, welcome to this video tutorial on the basics of making a map using GIS. In this case, I'll be demonstrating how to do it using ArcGIS Pro. I have another video where I use QGIS, so you can watch another video if you prefer. Um, my name is Esmond Holmes. I am from um, the Department of People and Technology at Oscar University in Denmark. So um, let's dive in. Um, the purpose of um, this video lecture is to teach you the basics. So basically, assuming you have no knowledge, prior knowledge of using ArcGIS Pro or GIS, to be able to make a map more or less like this one here. So this one is made in uh, QGIS. Um, so it might not look exactly the same, but the principle will be the same. So that's a process we all um, be going through. If we look at the steps, um, we can see that this is, let's say, our output. So we have a, um, uh, this is our final map where we have a data frame. This is what is a data frame here where we have zoomed in on Europe and another data frame where we have a whole of of the world and we have a legend again here so that's a data frame for Europe and we have to have some different layers to produce that data frame we might need to make some filters so delete some data remove some data from the layers we might need to do some transformations in our case um, this data is based on um, GDP per capita um, so, and with this data set, what we have to do is that we have to take the GDP and then divide by population. So there are some um, transformations we'll be doing. We'll do some summarization, so assigning different colors to different color intervals. And then finally, we will be arranging the map frame, so deciding on the projections, the zoom, the extent, the grids, if you want that layer ordering different things that relate to individual map frames. So we'll have to go through that process for two map frames, one for the whole world and one for Europe. And then there's that little one thing that we have to do first of all. We need some data. Um, and that's not here, so we need to acquire some data. In this case, I'll be working with um, of Natural Earth if we're using QGIS, we will look at the, the geo package. Um, but here in ArcGIS, it's best to download the shape file. So you click the shape, go to this website, and then you can download this shape file here. And you can then work for, with those. So what that will give you is um, a folder in the download of these shape files. And of course, you need the software. If you don't have um, ArcGIS Pro, you can um, you can Google free trial, register for a free trial, and you can have it for 21 days. Or maybe your institution will uh, supply you with one. So I won't cover um, downloading and installing ArcGIS. It's relatively straightforward. Um, and just assume that you have done that already. So now I will assume that we have downloaded the shape files, the themes and shape files, in our download folder, and then we have downloaded and installed ArcGIS Pro. So in that case, let's see what we do. Um, first of all, let's uh, just um, start ArcGIS. So from our Windows menu, we can go down and start ArcGIS. So ArcGIS down there. And we are interested in just starting the ArcGIS Pro file. It has different other additional tools, but that's the one we'll be using for this. And yes, there is no version for Mac. So um, this is a Windows only solution. You can, of course, install a virtual Windows on your Mac. So now we are ready to start ArcGIS. Got it here. And uh, first of all, we will start by creating a new project that is related, related to making a map. 
So I'll choose this one and I'll give it a name. Um, so let's call it uh, a GDP. Like that. So it will be installed in this folder here on my computer. Let's close this too. Um, which, how these uh, different windows appear when you start um, depends on how you've normally set your um, your software up. I think that the default is that you will have a view, that you will have a catalog view in the middle. Something like this. Okay. Um, so once we're in our, in our software, we will need to um, locate our data. First, we'll have to um, get hold of the file we downloaded from Natural Earth. So if I go to my file system and go into my downloads, boom, boom, boom. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I'll have um, this Natural Earth vector file. This is the one that comes when we work with um, downloaded the shapefile. And here we have um, a series of different versions. So we have a 1 to 10 million, which is the most detailed version. We have a 1 to 50 million, which is a bit coarser. And then we have a 1 to 100 and 10 million, which is the coarsest version of them. They also come both in the cultural and physical. So we have countries and populated places in culture where we have oceans and mountains and rivers and so on, and the physical. So let's take all of these and copy them. And in my case, I will paste them in here. So I'll just paste them down into that folder. And uh, now I've pasted them into the folder. We have these in this folder. So what we now want to do that we have to tell ArcGIS where to find its data. And that's always a bit of a hassle when you have to start with ArcGIS, is that you have to point to where you want to your data to be loaded from. So down in this one called Folders, it's the same as over here. You can right click on it and say Add New Folder Connection. So a folder connection is a tool where we tell ArcGIS where to find its data. In our case, we want to find down in Downloads and Geodata. So the only thing we've done now is that we've pointed to the folder that contains the data. Okay. So now we can go into that folder, um, all down in the, in the catalog pane here. And here we have all our different layers. Here. So I want to start with creating the course world, so just the little world map. Um, so this part down here. Um, so I want to start by creating that. So that's going to be the courses the data, the one to 110 million. And down in this folder, I will find my um, admin countries. Yeah, and I'll add that to my map. And I'll go back and in my course, this one, physical, I will find my oceans and also add that to my map. Um, I also wanted to uh, make a more detailed European data set. So to do that, so to do this data frame up here, um, I will use my 1 to 10 million culture. And I will use my countries again. And this time I'll add it to a new map. So if you look up here, there will be a new tab called Map 1. 
and I also want the ocean the data set that belongs to that so that's down here and I want one to ten million ocean and add that to map one um, I can rename these maps so uh, map zero if I want to rename that to uh, world and uh, I want to rename map one to you so um, I don't know why that one hasn't changed name yet um, but we have our world map here and um, I now have to go in and uh, work for this data set. First of all, for those that have not worked with uh, GIS before, if you look in our folders, we had our data that we downloaded. And we can see that some of them have this symbol indicating their line data, some of them are just indicating that they are polygon data, and some have these that indicate their pot data. So in vector data, data can either be a polygon or area, a line or a no point. In um, practice, what that means is that if I, um, let's say I zoom in on, on Egypt here, what we can say, you see, is that this boundary line consists of a lot of small straight line segments. So that's what gives the name vectors and um, if I, um, I click on it what we can see is that it can extract, first of all it gives it a color and then it also displays information about that geometry. So associated with the geometry is a series of what we call attributes or fields um, and um, here it does different information relating to this. We can see it's called Egypt and has an abbreviation in Egypt. And it has an estimated population and a gross domestic product in million of dollars estimated. So it has some different properties. It's those two properties there that we'll be using to symbolize this map. Um, if I want to zoom out again, I can right click my layer and choose zoom to layer and it will zoom out and show the whole layer. I have this underlying topology here which is the topographical map which is just a background map. I just remove that because I don't need it for this purpose. Um, it's just automatically created in ArcGIS. So I want to change the symbology. This one is simple, that's oceans. So I just want to make that a blue color. I guess that's relatively simple. Uh, another one that is a bit more complicated, that's this um, uh, countries. I want to color them based on the GDP per capita. So in order to do that, I'll go in under symbology. And here I have different types of symbology. At the moment they're all single symbol, that means everything is displayed in the same way. I can choose and use gradiated colors. So here I'll, it will ha give me a gradation of different colors. Um, here I can specify which attribute I want to gradate on. So if I want to, to gradate it on um, the GDP, and if I, let's say, I wanted uh, 10 classes, it will then display the GDP based on 10 classes. Um, ArcMap uses um, this one that's called natural breaks as its default, which is an okay approach. Um, the two more common one is to, to use equal intervals, uh, which normally does not produce a very interesting map. Um, and because as we can see, if we look at the histogram here, that we have a lot of countries in the lowest interval and not very many countries out in these high intervals. So we're not really using our intervals very well in this case. Normally I prefer to use um, quartiles uh, 
and this oh frax has as I guess it should be called when there are um, many of this uh, more than four so here I have within each of these intervals I have um, the same number in this case 10% of the world's countries so um, that's what I would normally do as my um, my calculation then there was this thing about doing the transformation so um, if we uh, looked here I've been playing around with some of the stage, but I haven't been symbolizing GDP per capita. So we all, that was not there, but that was a GDP in population. So I need to calculate this GDP per capita. And I can do this by going to this expression up here. And here I can write in a expression, as you can see at the moment, it says GDP. So, and this is in million of dollars. So I'll just uh, to get it in G I just convert it to dollars and then I'll divide it by uh, my population estimate a little bit high up uh, somewhere around here there so I made this equation here where I say GDP multiply in estimate million dollars multiply by a million so it's been GDP in dollars divided by the population I can check if I've done my equation correct that was fine so I can say okay and it will now recalculate these um, values there's lots of decimal values here I typically don't want that to reduce all of these um, decimals what I can do is that our, we have a series of different ones for primary symbology I can do some more special editing further I can also go to this one called advanced symbol options and here I can format the labels and what I want to do is I just want zero decimals here so if I now go back all my ranges here are, um, are rounded if I wanted to do something a bit more nice, as I could do in Kyuga, as it did in this, um, my this one where I have from zero to um, one thousand eight hundred, um, I could go in and write this in here. If I don't know what the minimum is, I can ask here for a statistic. Show statistics. So the minimum is uh, 50, 56, 57, um, to 100, to USD. And I can then do the same all the way down. So I can have a nice... Um, readable legend I won't use time in doing that now just I've shown how this can be done I don't know if there's any I don't know of any easy way of doing this automatically uh, you can do it programmatically but I don't know any easy ways of doing it <clears throat> so I have uh, now given my map both of my layers in my world map a um, symbology that I want to use now I would want to go and use the same symbologies in my EU map. So I'll just open my EU map. We still call it map one. Um, and I want to take my symbologies from here, move them over into my EU map. In order to do that, what I have to do is that I right click on my layer here in the one where I have given it the symbology and under sharing down here I say save as layer file a layer file is really just a definition of how data is um, transported between them and we are in the folder GDP and it's called uh, name of my layer and I'll just do the same to the oceans here so under sharing here 
choose save as their file and save it there. So now I've saved my symbology to the disk so I can go on my other map and now I can right click on my layer here go in and say symbology and um, I can choose my layer and I can up here import symbology of course in this case it would be easier to just change the color manually and point to a folder where I have it so this is my ocean and I can say run and it's now imported so they are now exactly the same you can't really see the difference here but it's well you can see it when I do it on this layer here so I say symbology right click so I right click on the layer show symbology go and set it to uh, gradiated colors go up under here say import and choose my countries down here and say run and now this layer has exactly the same symbology as my layer in my world map in fact it's really difficult you can only just see that there's a bit more details on this one than there's in this one so they are really very much the same in this EU map I wanted to reduce so I just look at the EU member countries um, so this is what I in uh, this process called filtering so I want to get rid of specific layers or specific elements in a layer um, the filtering operation can be done in many ways um, I find the easiest to do is to use what's called definition query so if I right click on my layer say properties it has a tab down here that's called definition query here I can specify a query in this query language called SQL um, I have a video on doing this but um, I just say new and I say that my what I want to query on is I know what the World Bank A2 codes are for the member states and I can go in and I can say include the values and here now I could click on all of those that are member states um, that's going to take too long so what I can do is I can change up here I can click on show SQL so here I have uh, a text version of the same and in my slide here I have this list of all the member states and I can then insert that in here and say apply and okay so now it has filtered down to my EU member states um, I also wanted to put a label on them I don't know if I can zoom here let's say zoom to layer yeah um, so I want to put labels on them so what I can do here is I go again say label properties I first have to define how I want to make my label um, it comes up over here I'll just drag that into the middle um, so what I want to label is not the name of the country but it is uh, I want to have it rounded so I want it as an integer so I use the function round and what I want to, to calculate is uh, the GDP Got that bracket wrong. Let's delete that. Uh, again, I'll multiply by a million and divide it by 
the population estimate and add in that last bracket. Oops, where did that go? Oh dear. Let's hope. I just check and this is correct. <coughs> so now I have to find a label class. And what I can now do simply is I can say label and yeah so it now it's applied to my labels here so we can see it um, I'll just move this I normally have this catalog um, floating over here in this part of the window here so now I can change between catalog and content that's how I like it um, it to be set up. So I have now got my content on my two data frames right. I might just want to get rid of uh, the ocean here on the other countries. So I'll just have them as white because they're not member states. Um, and um, what I now want to do is I want to compose my map or my layout if you wish so in my insert layer here, I go and say I want to have a new layout I wanted to have it as an A4 in landscape mode so this is my page on which I want to compose my map I can now go up under this insert here I'm in an insert and choose map frame and I can choose a world and I can place it down in the corner and I can choose my map one that one and insert that somewhere up here now I don't really like the projection that this is using this as a standard Mercator and it exaggerates um, the size of countries near the pole compared to equator so I want to change what is called the projection or the coordinate system on these maps so I do that by going to the world map choosing up here where it says the name of the map and going into its properties and now it has this coordinate system and I want to use um, my, for world maps I normally use a wrinkle um, and I go it's a projector coordinate system and it's a world oh I hadn't filtered good hopefully now it has filtered so I can now find the wrinkle and um, I want to use this triple point wrinkle so I say okay so that changes the projection and I want to do the same for this one here I want to um, do the same so I right click on the name of the map let's call it a use see if it if it won't miss, uh, and now I want to set the properties of it um, so now I want to set this not to wrinkle but to um, Europe if I set um, you're going to project it and the continental let's call that and Europe and I will use this one that is called Lambert as a model equal area that's a standard one you use in many EU projects so I'll choose this one as my uh, projection or coordinate system it will now recalculate <coughs> my data here so um, what we can see now is that I changed the projection is that the ocean is not showing up and that's not a specific uh, ArcGIS problem it's a problem in the data set the way the data set is created 
So there's some problems in projecting this data set. So I'll just dis delete this one from uh, this view here. So um, it should not be displayed any longer. And hopefully that um, it, it doesn't do any good at least. Um, so um, now I've got rid of that layer here. I can um, create a new layout. So what I want to do is I want to create a A4 in landscape. And now I can go up and say insert data frame. And I can choose um, my world, drag where I want it. And um, I can do the same up here for EU and drag where I want it. Um, I might, for my EU map, just add a base map. Um, map sorry uh, add base map uh just put a open street map underneath it oceans um so just to make it look a bit nicer in my layout here um so now hopefully it will produce the world here with my data set if i want to zoom in on europe what I can do is I can choose and right click on this layer here and say activate. Now all the rest goes are grayed out and I can use my zoom function on my keyboard to or my mouse to zoom in to where I want. Once I've finished I can close this activation up here in the corner. I can do the same down for my world map. So I right click on it, say activate and then I scroll in on it something like that and move it to something like there so don't, didn't want to do that do it so and I can close my activation again so now I've got my two layers um, displayed I want to um, add um, a legend so we have the legend here and I will just drag that where I want my legend. So somewhere from there, and I guess it going down to there. Um, this legend has properties. Um, I can change that. But first of all, note that over here in my panel over here, here, I can expand it and I can say, well, I don't really want the ocean to be displayed. So get rid of ocean. Now I can go to where properties are by clicking properties here or clicking over in the map and say I want to give it a title. So um, G -D uh, GDP And I'll ask it to show it. Um, GDP per capita in USD, that's fine. Um, I can also, if I go back to my layer here, customer, I can take my countries and um, that has properties. And the property I want to change is that I don't want to show its name and I don't want to show its heading. So now I've reduced this. It has um, so a little quirky thing with, with ArcGIS is that it can't make its legend wider than the widest line underneath. So the little title is cut off here which is really quirky, 
Well, what I can do is if I reduce the height so it becomes two lines, then there's room enough to make the full title. That's probably a workaround, I don't know. Um, so, but that's, um, that's that part of it. So now I think I'm getting my map more or less right. Um, I'll need to insert a title. So in my insert, I can insert a um, text rectangle, text test up here, and call that for um, GDP um, 2016. That. Um, and uh, I can reduce the size. There's a strange thing with ArcGIS. In QGIS, we change the size of things by changing the font. Here, the font it automatically aligns to the size of a box, so we can change the box to um, get it down. This is um, to the size. This is a default behavior that can be changed in a setting but as to start with that's how it does it so um i guess we'll also just want a text rectangle um with our description of what gdp is something like that and um remember that we had this in our uh, document here so we just copy this part of it and paste that in here So um, we now have our, our text installed. So we are more or less finished. It's not quite the same map as I started with because that was made in QGIS, but we've got more or less there. And um, well, the only thing I now need to do is I want to export it. And um, export is under share. So here I can take my layout and I can export it. And I can export it to a PDF or an image file or whatever I want. So I can export it to a GB. And I'll just export it. And if I look in my pictures, I have my layout. And so this is our map as we produced it. It's not exactly the same as we did in QGIS, but more or less the same. So I hope you like this um, introduction to making maps in uh, ArcGIS and um, see you in another video. Bye.